Oh my gosh, football season is almost upon us for the year. It's been a long, long drought of a summer. And despite the fact I love baseball, we definitely need this to spruce things up a little bit. And we are here to break down every bit of the season for you guys as the sideline sorcerers. I'm Rhett here with my buddy Jake, and we're big, avid sports fans, and we finally decided to do something about it. We are going to be breaking down all the games, making predictions, making picks, making parlays, helping you guys win money, because in the end, I mean, that's really what we're here for, making picks to make the games more interesting, the narratives more fun, and yeah, Sideline Sorcerers got a little bit of sorcery, a little bit of wizardry to help us on our side as well. I'm going to introduce myself and then I'll let Jake take the mic. But yeah, we are both recent Notre Dame graduates. So if there's a little bit of Irish fan, a little bit of Irish action that slips into this, you guys will understand why because we are avid Notre Dame fans, uh, football especially. And yeah, it's going to be a good year. It's going to be a playoff year for the Irish for sure. And we'll talk about that, I'm sure, at some point after they have some more credible wins (laughs) instead of Tennessee State and whatnot. And yeah, so I am now working full time. I am an operations manager at a manufacturing plant just temporarily. And I also run the caddy program at a country club that I've caddied at for nine years. So I am busy as hell. It's crazy, but we're going to have time to do this weekly podcast. And maybe down the road, we'll do two shows a week. But for now, I think we're aiming just for one. And yeah, we'll see where it takes us. And I'll let Jake get on with his intro now. Thanks for that, Rhett. Yeah, uh, like you mentioned, you know, we're both recent ND grads, and uh, we both had the same major, actually. We're both economic majors, so you can maybe call us, like, analytical (laughs) alchemists, sideline sorcerers. That's perfect. I love it. (laughs) All sorts of little alliterative names there. Um, But yeah, I'm currently in grad school at Cornell, uh, but I'm excited to apply these these analytical (laughs) skills to, uh, to these picks here. Should be very few mistakes in the parlays and all that stuff. And Agreed. be sure to call us on anything that happens. But this should be pretty clean. Should be pretty crispy. And yeah, we will be analyzing all of our picks in the future podcast. So we will return and we will be accountable for ourselves. We will hold each other accountable for our picks. We're not just going to glaze over them like Colin Cowherd, like his blazing five. Oh yeah, it doesn't matter next week. Just blaze on, you know, fire it up. No, no, no. We are going to assess, learn from our mistakes and just be be legit about it, you know? So that is where we're going to start with first, our week one predictions for the NFL season, just completely raw dong it. The preseason means jack, at least in my opinion. Very little from that honestly translates to the actual season. You know, who knows? Houston could have gone three and zero, but they probably won't be undefeated in the regular season. I mean, there are certainly a few things that I think matter. You know, looking at some of the quarterbacks and how they play, but even that, I think you know, a lot of people overreacted to seeing Justin Fields not play super great in the preseason. And so, yeah, everyone loves a good prediction segment, and so we're just gonna go through every game. Talk about who we think is going to win. Talk about the points from those specific games. And then we, of course, like I said, we'll reassess them in next week's podcast. And we will try and do these every Wednesday. I think that's a good day to do it, you know, right before the first game. And so, yeah, let's just dive right on in here with our week one predictions. Of course, Detroit is visiting Kansas City for the opener on Thursday night football. I think this is a great game to open it up. Honestly, a little bit of a ballsy pick for the NFL, I think. You know, everyone's jumping on Detroit's bandwagon because of the fact that, you know, they were so exciting and they've been so bad for so long. So now they're tossing the ringer here with Kansas City. That being said, just today, I think Travis Kelsey hyperextended, what was it? His, his knee. His, his knee. knee. His knee. Okay, so he is questionable to start in a couple of days here or tomorrow. So that has changed a few things. But mm-hmm. my pick is still going to be Kansas City. As much as I would love to see Detroit win, trust me, I'm a Bears fan. We're from Chicago, so of course we are Bears fans. But that doesn't mean that we have to hate on everyone in our division. Green Bay, yes. Detroit, not so much. I like Detroit. And I would love to see him win this game. I like Jared Goff, but I just don't think they have what it takes week one at Kansas City because Kansas City is just so gosh damn good. You know what I mean? And they are still, I believe, like five, five and a half point favorites. I would probably bet that one, though, just because of the fact that 
Travis Kelsey may very well be out. And even if he is in the game, he's probably not going to be 100%. But what do you think about that one? You know, I think it's a good pick. I mean, the Chiefs are absolutely lethal. You know, they're reigning Super Bowl champs. Uh, It's hard to bet against the Chiefs. Uh, You know, that being said, I am going to take Detroit in this matchup. Wow, that's crazy. That is another ballsy move there. Yeah, it's quite ballsy, Brett. But uh, the point total on this game is the highest of any of the the over-unders this week. Is it really? Yeah, I, I think that. it was 55 was the over-under on this game. That's crazy. Yeah, so these are two very high-powered offenses mm-hmm. yeah. that are going to be facing each other. And Kelsey has not missed a game since his rookie season. I know. M- Mahomes does not know how to play without Kelsey. So, Good I mean, if, if Kelsey is sitting... I mean, I definitely would be picking Detroit. I'm still going to pick Detroit, whether or not Kelsey yeah. plays. Okay. Um, just because I, I think they've got a lot to prove this season, and I think they're going to come out come out of the gates fired up. Um, so I'm picking Detroit as the underdogs this week. Yeah, no, that sounds good. I really hope you're right. I just, man, I don't know if they have it all put together just yet. But, yeah, man, I would like to see them win for sure. All right. Next game, Cincinnati at Cleveland. Now, I am a huge Joe Burrow fan. I think he's my favorite quarterback in the league. But he is still questionable for this first game here from his injury in practice over the summer, which is very sad. I really hope he plays. If he doesn't play, I'd be very – I mean, I would actually pick Cleveland undeniably. Undoubtedly, Cleveland wins this game if Joe Burrow does not play. If Joe Burrow does play, I still think it will be a good game, but – I'm going to take Cincinnati at Cleveland here, although this is one of my least confident picks. I mean, Cleveland could be really good. Deshaun Watson could revert back to his 2020 self, or he could be like he was last year, which wasn't very good, like highly inaccurate, not throwing the ball a ton, not really throwing the ball too well down the field, but... Obviously, he's been more in the game now. Like He wasn't allowed to practice even while he was suspended there. So when he started for the Browns last year, it was you know on very little practice. So it's a tough one for me. I just, oh my God, maybe I'm picking on my heart a little bit too much. Maybe Cincinnati wins the game when they're playing at home against Cleveland, but I'm still going to take Cincinnati if Joe Burrow plays. So that, was, that was my thought as well, although... The home field advantage thing is just what really swung me for this one. Yeah. Being in Cleveland with uh, with Watson and just being the home opener. I mean, Watson's got a touchdown there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for people who didn't get that reference, that was my fantasy football team name so last clever. year. <laughs> yeah, the masseuse. We had to rep the masseuse. Oh, yeah, we do. <laughs> but uh, Cleveland is slight underdogs in this game at home, and I I just can't stray from taking a home underdog. So I'm actually taking Cleveland this week. Yeah, I think that's a really good pick. I think it's pretty feasible that they split the division, you know, the two yeah. games that they play, and it's probably going to be based on, you know, Joe Burrow not being 100% mm-hmm. playing in Cleveland, all the factors. So, right. yeah, I like that. Then we have Houston at Baltimore. Now, I really do like – I cannot believe Houston is – 10-point underdog as it stands right now, I believe. Yeah, well, it looks like it opened at 10, and now it's at 9.5 in favor of Baltimore. I just think that's way too much credit to give to Baltimore right now when Lamar hasn't played in a long time. It's been since, I think, like October, November of last year since he's played a game. They have almost an entirely new receiving core. I mean, Rashad Bateman's still there, but they brought in Odell Beckham. I know Zay Flowers is there. He looks good. Mark Andrews is still there, but I believe he's questionable. And I think Baltimore's defense is going to be questionable as well as an entirety this season. Whereas in the past, they've always been pretty solid. I just have lost a couple pieces, and they were starting to fall apart there at the end of last season, even though they almost pulled it out against Cincinnati with a pack of quarterback in the playoffs. But, yeah, no, I still will take Baltimore to win this game, but I think Houston should be able to easily cover that spread, even though it is going to be C.J. Stroud's first start. But historically, first-round quarterbacks have played pretty well in their opening week. I remember a couple years ago, like Trey Lance, Mac Jones, and some of those other guys, they all had really good starting weeks 
And I think CJ Stroud will actually fare pretty well at Baltimore here. So that's my pick. Baltimore, but Houston definitely to cover the spread. I'm in the same boat with you on this one. I am also taking Baltimore money line, but Houston should be able to cover this spread with with CJ Stroud for the opener. Uh, I think he's going to come out really excited to play. Um, you know, just first round uh, draft pick. He's got to be excited on this new team. So I think CJ is going to going to come out with a, a shocking but you know exciting first performance. I could see this game ending like a 27-24 Baltimore. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm taking Baltimore, but like you said, Houston to cover the spread. Yeah, I could see CJ throwing like three touchdowns, one interception, maybe even two interceptions in this game. Just kind of like a very wild game. Probably not a whole lot of running in this game. I think it's going to be relatively high scoring. Yeah, it should be a fun one, despite being not great teams, in my opinion. Then next up, we have Tampa Bay at Minnesota. Tom Brady is gone. Very sad. Tom Brady, I loved him, man. You know, I went to the game, actually, Tampa Bay and Green Bay last year. I went down to Tampa Bay for it. So I'm a huge Tom Brady guy, and it's a little sad to see him gone. Really wish he you know, went to Vegas or San Fran or somewhere this year. But you got Baker Mayfield now, guys, and ooh, I don't know how I feel about that. I never <laughs> I really liked, Baker. yeah, I never really liked him, but I could see him actually having some success in Tampa. He's got great receivers, but a horrible offensive line. I think Ryan Jensen's out. I mean, he's just been struggling. They're moving Tristan Wirfs from his original position, and. Definitely I'm going to take Minnesota here, but I think it'll be a closer game than people expect. I think it's going to be pretty high scoring, you know, week one. Defenses are going to be sloppy over the first couple weeks, and then they'll start to tighten things up. But yeah, I think this will be pretty high scoring. Tampa Bay makes it a fight, but Minnesota pulls it out in the end. Yeah, that that sounds like a good pick to me. Um you know, I I really I do not like Baker. Uh I'm I'm just not a fan of him at all and whether or not the, the O-line is, is good, I don't think will even matter. I'm just not a believer in his talent. Yeah, I, I mean, with you. S- since college, he's just deteriorated a little bit, some some regression. Yeah. yeah, he had one good year when he took the Browns to the yeah. playoffs, but I think that was more fluky than anyways. That was like the 2020 season anyways. That doesn't really, right. I don't know, <laughs> come into play a lot. And I would really love to see Kyle Trask play eventually this season mm-hmm. because he was great at Florida his last season, and that was a while ago now, and the poor guy has not gotten an opportunity to start, and he sat behind Tom Brady, so I think he actually could be pretty good as a pro Mm -hmm. if he gets the opportunity. So yeah, it should be a good game, and I think this one will be as well. Carolina at Atlanta. This is another tough one for me to pick. I think, I mean, both are very young teams. You have Desmond Ritter, second-year quarterback, who's only started like four or five games. Then you have Bryce Young starting his first game, so I think it's going to be quite the duel. I think they also played, oh no, they didn't face each other in college. That's unfortunate. That would have been cool, but Desmond Ritter does have the slight edge over Bryce Young with his experience from last year, and that is why I'm going to take Atlanta. I think Atlanta. I think Bijan Robinson is going to have a pretty good game, and Carolina is just too young, too inexperienced. I think you know Bryce Young will have a decent game, but I definitely think he's liable for an interception. I think Atlanta's secondary is actually quite solid, quite underrated, and being played in Atlanta. I could definitely see Carolina winning their next game when they're playing at home. But yeah, this is, I don't know, kind of a throwaway game. I don't think it's really going to factor into much in the long haul. I think New Orleans is going to win the division. Atlanta, well, they could be good. A lot of people are buying into them, but I just don't see Desmond Ritter, honestly, as a long-term option in Atlanta. Yeah, uh, this one was just like a toss-up for me. Yeah. I, I mean, it was just like a 50-50, you know, toss-up. I, I didn't know if I should pick Carolina or Atlanta. Yeah, um, me too. I, I guess ultimately I'm going to go with Atlanta, but that's more of just a pick of I want to see Bijan just go nuts this week. I'm so yeah. excited to see him play in his first game. He's got a ton of hype around him. I mean, this is one of the first guys probably since... Saquon, who's a rookie getting taken in the first round of our fantasy drafts. Yeah, I know for sure. I mean, I think ETN might have gone, but obviously he got first or he got hurt his first season. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, the hype around Bijan is 
more than any running back I can remember. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited to see him play, though. So for that reason, I'm picking Atlanta. But yeah, yeah, just more of a, a toss up here. Yeah, I'm just worried. I mean, last year you had Brees Hall and Damian Pierce both get injured as rookie running backs after starting off yeah. well. So I just I didn't draft him in any of my leagues yet, just out of fear. I just don't know fully what he's going to be yet. But yeah, I tend to agree with that. This next game here is basically, you know, the garbage pole. It's <laughs> they're just bashing around in a couple garbage cans like a couple raccoons. I mean, <laughs> Arizona at Washington. Now, I do like Sam Howell a lot. I actually saw him play because North Carolina played Notre Dame when he was there. So I've been kind of following him for a while, and I like him a lot. He played well in the preseason, and I think that is one thing that you could actually take as some stock from the preseason is how some of these younger quarterbacks play. Arizona, are they starring? I mean, who knows? Is it Josh Dobbs, who they just picked up from the Browns, I think it was? Is it going to be... Was it Clayton Toon, rookie out of Houston, like fifth round pick? I would love if they played him because I mean we know what Josh Dobbs is. He played in a game against Jacksonville last year, starting for Tennessee. I think it was against no, was it against someone else? I think it was actually against Jacksonville. But I mean he's a gamer, like he's a you know he's gritty, and I like him a lot. Really smart guy too. I think he has like he got some sort of crazy degree from Tennessee, if I am not mistaken. But anyways. I'd love to see Clay and Toon play just as a rookie. I mean, maybe he could be something. I mean, who knows? Love to just see more quarterbacks get an opportunity. So, yeah, if he plays, if Josh Dobbs plays, doesn't matter. Washington should easily win this game. Even if Terry McLaurin is out, I think he has turf toe or something like that, Sam Hall still has serviceable weapons to spread the ball around to, and I think they'll be able to run quite easily on Arizona as well. Arizona is tanking this year, but... They're still going to try and win games. They just completely made their team devoid of any talent. And so that is how they're tanking. They're not going to make any dumb calls. They're just devoid of talent. Except I think Buda Baker is still on the team. So he'll be a part of the rebuild. And yeah, garbage game. Whatever. What do you think? I'm taking Washington too just because Arizona has no offense, man. I mean, Kyler's Zero. out. Kyler's gone. Yeah. D-Hop is gone. Diop's gone. Well, they still got Rondale. <laughs> no, Rondale. He's just... Oh, they do have Hollywood Brown as well. Poor Hollywood Brown, yeah. honestly. They could I could see them trading him over the next couple of weeks here. Yeah, months. I guess that's possible. Do you know what his like salary is at like right now? I feel like I it's probably no like give it a quick little Google ski here. Marquise Brown salary. I could definitely see them getting rid of him if he's taking up too much of their their salary cap. Man, I'm not finding it here. It's got like, oh, he's got a base salary, fifth year option worth thirteen point four one three million. See, I think he's still on like a rookie contract, which is why mm. he's being paid so low. Ah, uh, whatever. Either way, he'll be due for a payday here soon, and I would definitely not be surprised if he gets traded because, yeah. like I said, they're making that team devoid of talent. Rondale is the waiver wire king, bro. He's no, just he on the be. he's on the waiver wire in like every league, and I feel like someone just adds him and then they mm-hmm. drop him the next week. <laughs> he could be all right, you know, if they do trade Hollywood. And honestly, even if they don't, Hollywood's gonna be doubled on every play, right. and they're gonna be playing from behind. So Rondale is going to have those one on one matchups that we'll see if he can win. That's true. Yeah, that's a good point. All right. Next up, we have Jacksonville at Indianapolis. This is going to be a fun game, I think. I'm excited for this one. Yeah, are you? Yeah. What makes you so excited? Dude, for it's it? it's T Law. He's going to have a breakout oh, season. My, yeah, no, I'm with you. I think MVP candidate, although I want to see Joe Burrow get his MVP and then Trevor Lawrence can get his MVP. But, you know, Joe Burrow was drafted first. He had a whole bad injury. Mm hmm. He deserves the MVP. Josh Allen does too a little bit, but he throws too many picks and fumbles. So Joe Burrow and then Jacksonville's Trevor Lawrence can get his MVP. We're going to have to come back to this discussion because what about the Justin Fields MVP? You know what? I would love that. I would really love that, but I am not a huge believer of his ability to throw the football just yet. Now, I know I said people overreacted from him in the preseason, but I still, even without that, it's just like, man... Bro's got to learn how to toss the football. And he was good at Ohio State. Like, I remember that game against Clemson. Against Trevor Lawrence, he threw, like, three bombs on them. Absolutely blew them out. So, yeah, anyways, back to this game. 
I'm taking Jacksonville, obviously. I think Anthony Brown is going to He's going to be like, what's a good comparison? You know, quarterback that just makes a ton of noise, racks up garbage time yards and rushing yards. He'll probably be pretty good in fantasy. But, I mean, he's due for like two or three picks on a fumble in this game or, you know, maybe the next game against a slightly better defense. I'm not sure who they play next. But, Mm -hmm. yeah, I think he's going to be a turnover machine. And, yeah, Jacksonville should be able to easily take this one for the – early season 1-0 and and probably off to a good start and winning that division. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think uh, Colts are going to be sloppy as they, they usually are, um, but yeah. I'm excited to see this Jacksonville team. Um, you know, I'm a big believer in, in Trevor Lawrence, yep. and they've got some nice offensive weapons now. We didn't even talk about yet Calvin Ridley, oh, I know. the Calvin addition to Calvin back. Ridley. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully Calvin doesn't watch his podcast and place any bets <laughs> on his own team again. Yeah. Come on, bro. Don't do that. Yeah, absolutely Guys, not. come on. <laughs> yeah. Poor guy just lost a whole season. But maybe he liked that. You know, maybe he vacationed and, you yeah, know. Just kicking back. A- yeah, <laughs> in Aruba. He He's number zero now. Do you see that? Number zero? Yeah, you I know, know what? I, I only know because... I was playing Madden and I absolutely destroyed the four. Actually, I didn't destroy the 49ers. It was a great game I played in Madden, but yeah. I won and uh, I was throwing nice, like three yeah. touchdowns to Calvin Ridley. I know he was number zero now, but anyways, wow. yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I'm excited to watch them play, see what happens with Calvin. Um, you know, are they going to be double teaming him every time? And then Christian Kirk has an incredible yeah, season. Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about that actually yeah. in a little bit here. Yeah. And then. You know, even just watching ETN play too, I'm really excited about this, yeah, this I like Jacksonville him. team, you know, that was kind of terrible just a couple of years ago. I know. I mean, even like at the beginning of last year, like they looked not great. I yeah. think they lost a game to Detroit in midseason that they should have probably won. I mean, mm-hmm. the way they ended the season, they felt like a top like six, seven team. Yes, sir. The way they came back against the Chargers there. I mean, I still remember that vividly. I was in Vegas looking at the score. 28 to nothing. And I think I told my dad, I was like, Trevor Lawrence can come back from this. And sure enough, he did. But yeah, who knows? Maybe even Tanks Bigsby has a breakout. He's on this team, right? Tank Bigsby, <laughs> yes, is. sir. <laughs> Can't wait to see Tank Biz- Bigsby on the, in Just the backfield. Is it one tank or two tanks? <laughs> tanks? <laughs> Just one tank. Just okay. one tank. Yeah, but he's going to be a, a stealthy little yeah. fox out of the backfield, bro. Yeah, you know, I think if ETN gets hurt, which I hope he doesn't, but... Tanks is going to be all right. Yeah. All right. Next up, we have San Francisco at Pittsburgh. I like this game in terms of, you know, Mm -hmm. just watchability. A lot of people are taking Pittsburgh to win the division this year, which I think is a little bit idiotic. Yeah. I'm I'm not a fan of that. (laughs) I mean, do we remember like what happened last season? They they were not very good. No. That being said, though, I do have to, I do have to say they won like a bunch of their final games. They yeah. played pretty solid at the very end there. I think it was like New or Christmas Eve had the game on against the Raiders. Derek Carr played like dog shit, really made me mad, and the Steelers won that game. And it's yeah. like they just sneakily win games and they still somehow ended up with like mm-hmm. a five and or no, it was like a five hundred record. I think they were like no, it was like eight and nine or nine and eight, something like that. But that's surprising because I just feel like they were much worse than oh, yeah. that. That's like the impression that I got from this. I mean, they really year. were, but I mean, think about it. They even beat Tampa Bay last year because... Wow. Yeah. (laughs) But Tampa Bay was also kind of dog shit. So, yes, I do think San Francisco will win this game. But I think, you know, we're taking all the easy picks. I feel like it's too... There's like going to be like a snake in the weeds here. There's going to be a game that just no one sees coming. I think Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh, this one could be that game. They could win this game. It's at home. The crowd's probably going to be nuts. And Brock Purdy coming off his injury... Glad he didn't really miss any time. I like Brock Purdy a lot, but Pittsburgh's defense is gnarly. I think Kenny Pickett's going to be much improved. You know, I'm in a two QB league this year, and I wanted to take Kenny Pickett as my second quarterback, but you know who I ended up with? Brock Purdy. <laughs> so I think that says something here that Pitts actually has a chance. I think Pittsburgh has a chance to win this game, although I'm still going to take San Fran. But honestly, I mean, what do you think? You gonna you make a wild one here? No, 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 no wild one for me here. <clears throat> I'm taking the the safer pick, I think, with with San Fran. Um, but the odds makers in Vegas have this set at such a close game, man. I mean, I think yeah, 
I, I really do think it will be close. Where are they? So Pittsburgh is two and a half point underdogs. Two and, and a half. Fifty-two percent of the money is on Pittsburgh, which is wild. Yeah, the money line is only like plus one twenty on Pittsburgh, I think, which is like that is crazy. Close to even odds. I mean, this is you know a San yeah. Francisco team that is absolutely stacked. I mean, they've got oh CMC God. in the backfield. Yeah. They've got Debo, Ayuk, <laughs> Kittle. If he yeah. plays, I mean, this team is is impeccably yeah, stacked. Yeah, Bosa. I mean, I think. I think Bosa might be out this week, though. Really? Yeah, I think there was some contract oh, no. issues with him. Oh, my God. Well, I thought they sold on like $30 million a year or something crazy like that. Or maybe, maybe that's maybe what they're talking about. Maybe he was still unhappy. About. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> $30 million, he should not yeah. be unhappy about that. Makes him like one of the highest paid players, yeah, really. Yeah, not quarterback players. he's just players. fighting for the 31. <laughs> <laughs> get everything he can. I mean, yeah, he's disruptive, so he probably deserves it. Yeah, I can't get over that. I feel like either Pittsburgh wins or San Fran wins by like seven or more because... Mm-hmm. Maybe people are buying too much in the Pittsburgh week one here, and San Fran is you know, still significantly a better yeah. team, especially this early in the season. I actually have San Fran making it to the Super Bowl this year. I, I just really? love their offense so you much, man. They have so many weapons. I love them, too. I just, they always find a way to lose in the playoffs, like one game before yeah, the Super Bowl. That's true. That being said, though, you know what? If they could stay healthy, I do think they have a shot. I mean, the NFC is just so much weaker compared to the mm-hmm. AFC. I think AFC, I'm not sure they make the Super Bowl, but they really just got to get past Philly. I think that's really the only contender in yeah. the division. I think that the gap in between San Fran, Philly, and then like the rest of the teams in the whole NFC is yeah. considerable. Mm-hmm. So good game, though. Yes, it's a good matchup. Definitely. I'm excited yeah. to watch that one. Dude, we gotta we gotta talk about this student discount. <laughs> oh my for, gosh! Yes. For NFL <laughs> Sunday ticket, because yeah. I'm so excited. I get to watch all of the games now. So you got it? I got it. Yeah, I got it. It's only a hundred and nine dollars. Oh no! For but it's only season. one device, though. It is only one device, and I'm not a student anymore. So. Yeah. I got shafted. <laughs> yeah, but I'm so excited that I'll yeah. be able to watch all of these games on Sunday now for this massive wow. discount. What is the normal price for like $400. it? Four hundred dollars. That is absurd. Yeah, is a student really like one fourth <laughs> the <laughs> amount of the? Is that really? I don't know about that one. Yeah, but I guess I'll just <sighs> be pirating games. I'm just kidding. I don't <laughs> actually mean that. I've never pirated a game in my life. <laughs> Just sign up with multiple emails to get those free trials. You know what I mean? Yeah, every, yeah, yeah absolutely. Every seven days. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do for MLB TV. Anyways, <laughs> hey who? Tennessee at New Orleans. Now, this is my guy, Ryan Tannehill, playing for his job this year. He absolutely needs to play well this year. Otherwise, he's out, and there's probably not going to be too many spots in the leagues for him to fall. I mean, there are going to be a lot of good quarterbacks from the draft. Drake May, Caleb Williams, Sam Hartman, all those guys. And Ryan Tannehill here, who's aging, even though he could still run, not have anything too flashy about him. He's dealt with some injuries over the last couple of years, despite putting up literally MVP numbers in 2020. I just want to put it out there. He had like 36 touchdowns, and only like nine or 10 interceptions in 2020. Mm-hmm. And he had like eight or nine rushing touchdowns. I mean, he was wow. insane in 2020, like literally. Yeah. And no one paid any attention to it. So I do think they're going to win this game just because – New Orleans, new head coach. Oh, wait, no, no, not new head coach, but a bad head coach. I don't like Dennis Allen. New quarterback in Derek Carr, who I think will be good this year, but I think he's just going to be gunslinger Derek. He's going to be throwing the ball all over the place. You know, Alvin Kamara, isn't Alvin suspended, He's suspended, I think, for maybe six games or four, something like that. He did something super in Vegas, I think it was, yeah. Yeah. And you got Jamal Williams from the Lions, I think, so starting for New Orleans. So I think he'll be all right, but... They're going to be throwing the ball a ton. Derek's known to throw a pick here and there. Tennessee's secondary is pretty solid. So I do think, despite being an underdog, Tennessee will win this game. And I would really I would really like them to win this game because everyone's counting them out this year, despite having one of the best coaches in the league. And mm-hmm. Derek Henry is still there. Poor Derek Henry, man. Everyone's shafting him in fantasy drafts. Yeah. The dude's still, I mean, he's a ox. He's a freak of nature, bro. Yeah. And he's. I got him with the, the two... Uh, 209 in my fantasy draft. That's absurd. Yeah. No respect at all on the King's name. Yeah, I don't get it. But I like the Tennessee pick a lot, though. I'm really really, really excited for this game, and I'm also taking Tennessee. Um, Yeah, I'm excited to see 
Tennessee with with D Hop on on their offense. Yeah, now. hopefully it's not like the Julio Jones situation where yes. he like doesn't play really at all and he's really bad. <laughs> yeah, we cannot let that happen because I've got D Hop no. in multiple leagues here. But uh, you know, you could be right with that though. Tennessee's kind of been the place where just once receivers hit their thirty year old <laughs> they season, they go to die. Yeah, like yeah, Randy Moss went there once he was over thirty. Did he really? Yeah, and Robert that. Woods. Oh, Robert yeah. too. Now he's on and, the Texans, I think. I can't believe he's even still playing. He's a homie hopper. Oh, wow. He just went over to the division <laughs> yeah, rival. Yeah, he is. And yeah, like you said, Julio Jones. Um, so I do not want that to happen to D-Hop no. this year. I think that Tennessee is going mm-hmm. to treat him nicely, though, and I think he's yeah. he's set up for a good season this year. Yeah, I think Traylon Burks, who is now in his second year, needs to step it up a little bit. He mm-hmm. showed potential last year, but really didn't do a whole lot. He needs to step it up. He was supposed to be replacement of A.J. Brown. He was supposed to be yeah. equivalent to A.J. Brown, and he obviously has been mm-hmm. a fraction of what A.J. Brown has been. So he needs to step it up, and that will open up opportunities for the aging D-Hop. Absolutely, but it's yeah. not like you know someone like D-Hop can't thrive in, yeah. in an offense with, in Tennessee because, like you mentioned, you know A.J. Brown prospered with Tannehill. I think that, that. Oh my God, he was so good. Yeah, I think that D Hop can really do the same. But you know, like you said, Traylon has to take that next step up and become sure become a receiver that needs to be guarded more closely. Yeah, he needs to put his big boy pants on yeah. and <laughs> do something and not be injured because I think he's still questionable right now. It's like, bro, yeah. come on, man, come on, man. All right, next up, we have a nice interdivision rivalry game of Vegas at Denver. And man, it is time for Denver to do something this year. Now, it's funny. They started the year last year 2-1. and one. People thought like, yeah, this makes sense. Denver is supposed to be 2-1. and one. But they beat San Fran, I think, by like a point or two. Maybe it was 15-11. to 11. It was a weird game. Anywho, obviously they ended the season horribly. Russell Wilson did not play well. And overall, the team was a major disappointment despite having one of the best defenses in the league. Now you have Sean Payton coming out of his little semi-retirement there. And they have no excuses this year to not be good. And I really do believe, I'm going to believe in them this year. I think they will be solid. Sean Payton is just kind of like a cheat code, you know. It's like you have him on your team. I think you find a way to win like 10 games, 9 to 10 games for Denver, I think, this year. Russell Wilson almost played himself out of the Hall of Fame last year. I mean, I don't know what bro was doing. He was just like, I'm going to throw a couple just brain-dead interceptions and not enter the Hall of Fame, Mm -hmm. even though I was one of the best quarterbacks. And now, like, I'm viewed as... Mac Jones level, you yeah. know? <laughs> so uh, you got Jimmy Garoppolo, first time starting for Vegas. I think he'll be fine, but yeah, I think Denver should win this game. I could see Vegas winning it when it's in Vegas, but if Denver loses this game, the amount of hate and criticism they will all receive will be just unfathomable. Yeah. So they have to win this game. They have to. <laughs> <laughs> they, they definitely do, um, but I'm just not a fan I, I no? don't like Denver at all, man. Oh my God. Russell ruined it for me last year. <laughs> he, I don't know if you remember this, but he like... Broncos post- country, let's ride. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's ride. But uh, he posted on Twitter um, about when he was like flying on the airplane with his team to one of the games. Oh, yes, he yes, was, you showed me this, I remember. He, he was doing the high knees. <laughs> oh, my God, His yeah. teammates were all sleeping, oh, and, wow. and Russell's just grinding out high knees on their private jet. Bro, it's like read the room. Like I think that, that was coming back from a loss. I'm sure. Yeah. And yeah, that was absurd. I think he just had such. He's got like apparently there was this weird like quote or whatever I read that he has more bathrooms in his house than he had like incompletions or completions <laughs> in a game. He's got like he had like ten or thirteen bathrooms in his house, and so like when his teammates see that, it just creates a little bit of a disparity in between his teammates and failure to connect and especially Jerry Judy because Jerry Judy needs to step it up a little bit as well. He has not been great despite, you know, being touted as one of the best receivers since coming out. I think it was Alabama, right? Or was it Oklahoma? One of the two. So yeah, both of them need to step up. Corlin Sutton needs to get back to his ways of a couple years ago, and I think they will be okay this year. Yeah. So just to, just to make that clear, I am taking Vegas in this game. That is like our second dispute, I think. Third. The first two we uh, we disagreed on as well because I took oh, Detroit took... and Cleveland. Oh, all yeah. right, all right. 
Yeah. Because we are going to be keeping track, and this is going yes. to be competitive. You it know, is. once we you know look back on the year, see who had the best winning percentage. Yeah, we'll see <laughs> who's a who's a sorcerer and who's still just like a baby little apprentice. Yeah, I know. I might not be able to get my wand until <laughs> whoever loses gets stripped of their wand and their cape. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so so what do you think is going to happen with Josh Jacobs this year? Because he was also, I, mm. I think he finished as either the the yeah. one, the one or the two RB last year, and he also was being drafted at like the end of the second round in fantasy. Yeah. Like, so what what's your take on that? Yeah, you know, I think it is important. You know, I don't want to like blur fantasy with the real, you know, NFL a whole right. lot because there's a lot of differences and whatnot, a lot of garbage time numbers that inflates their stats and all that. But oh, well, he ran like a, a monster truck yeah, last year. Yeah, no, he played great despite a lot of people thinking that he wouldn't. But you know what? I think he's due. I don't wish this upon anyone, but I think he's due for an injury. I think he's due for a regression. And I think whether they have like Zamir White. At backup rookie, mm-hmm. think he could get a lot of opportunities this year. All in all, I do think that if Vegas is going to have any success, though, it needs to because be because of Josh Jacobs. Mm-hmm. Jimmy Garoppolo can then play off of that play action and just kind of hide behind the fear of Josh Jacobs in terms of our team's perspectives. Otherwise, if you just put it all on Jimmy Garoppolo, throw the ball all over the field, you know. <laughs> He's going to throw picks just like he did in San Francisco. When you ask Jimmy to win a game for you, and he can game manage all day long and he can limit his mistakes, but when he's got to do it all by himself, I mean, just doesn't tend to go super well, despite me liking the guy. I mean, he literally looks like mm-hmm. a Giga Chad. So I don't know. I don't know. I just, I like Jacobs. I think he'll be solid, but I also think that just the law of averages, you're going to have to kick in with him. Right. Yeah. He's on a bad sense. team this year. Yeah. I'm excited to watch Garoppolo though, and uh, yeah. see how he adapts to this this new offense. Um, I mean, he did well in San Fran, but you know, we mentioned before that he just had so many weapons to work with there. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure the same can Ooh. really be said. I mean, he's got he's no got more Darren Scro- Waller. <laughs> no, no more Waller, but he's got Scrovante. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. You know what? I love Scrovante. I do think he'll be pretty solid, but again, he'll be double teamed. Although. Not a huge difference from last year because Darren Waller was out a lot of games mm-hmm. last year. Yeah. You have Hunter Renfro who is capable. And I think they have another like decent receiver. Oh, Michael Myers, our oh, yeah. fellow alum. That's right. Although I think he just dropped out, so he didn't even graduate. <laughs> Michael oh, really? Myers. Yeah, I mean, he okay. was only like a sophomore, a junior. He, is he their starting tight end this yeah. year? Yeah. Oh, I mean, wow. there's Foster Moreau, which is also kind of funny, wow, you know, because yeah. Moreau is like a big name, whatever, yeah. in Notre Dame history. <laughs> Anywho, Foster Moreau, I don't think he's the starter. I think Michael Myers is technically the starter, but right. Foster Moreau okay. has put up decent numbers in the past. So, yeah, I think, you know, actually Michael Myers could be a sneaky tight end. I mean, maybe it's just my bias speaking, mm-hmm. but I want to have him on my team, on some of my fantasy teams as the backup tight end because I think he could actually be quite serviceable. Yes, sir. All right, moving along. That was a long one it for was. Vegas, but we it's a juicy a lot to game. Talk about yeah, it, yeah. It's a lot of girth in that game. <laughs> Philadelphia at New England. I really don't care about this game at all. I think New England's going to be pretty bad this year. Yes. They cut all their quarterbacks, you know, they cut Bailey Zapp and they cut some other guy and they brought in Matt Corral, who I think was on the Panthers. He was he was from an SEC school. He played decent in college. This is like his third year now, I believe. And I don't know what they were going for with that, to be honest with you. But yeah, I don't believe in Mac Jones as, you know, a great quarterback. He played our right last year, but I just don't think going up against Philly's defense. And Philly's probably a little mad this year that they lost the Super Bowl. I also, I mean, who knows? Maybe they'll be in a little hangover like the Bengals were at the beginning of last year. They didn't play great. I think the Bengals started 2-4 and four last year coming off their Super Bowl loss. Mm-hmm. Maybe the Eagles do something similarly, but they should be able to win a pretty easy game here. Being in New England at this time of year doesn't mean jack squat. It's still going to be hot. It's still going to be a good temperature, so it's not like they're playing in the cold. So, yeah. Should be an easy win for New England or for Philadelphia as long as they just avoid the traditional Bill Belichick traps. But, I mean, he's losing his tricks up his sleeves these days. He doesn't got a whole lot (laughs) left, I don't believe. I mean, he's a great coach. but No, definitely not. Yeah, he he regressed once Brady left a little bit, I think. Yeah, Brady, Uh, I think it was like a 75-25. Brady was responsible for their success. Right. 
But uh, yeah, I don't have a whole lot to say about this one. I think it'll be an easy win for Philly. Um, I mean, Jalen is just a star, and I mean, Mac Jones doesn't stand yeah. a chance against uh, an offense like that. So I'm taking Philly with an easy win this week. Yeah, I'd be really surprised if New England won this game. But, you know, Bill Belichick, he's still, I guess, he's still got some juice left in the tank. So who knows? Then we have the Rams at the Seattle Seahawks. This is a game I think could definitely go in the opposite way that a lot of people are thinking. I think the Rams could win this game. Everyone is dogging on the Rams, but they still have Matt Stafford, who is probably going to be a Hall of Fame quarterback. They still have Cooper Cup, who could be a Hall of Fame wide receiver. They have Cam Akers, who I think is a really good running back. They still have Aaron Donald. So all around, they still have components. They have a great head coach. And let's be real, it is Geno Smith, after all, who's been a lifetime backup, a career-long backup. He had one good year, and he's gotten paid now. He's gotten paid, so does he still have it in him to work as hard as he did last year? You don't have faith in Geno after last year? I love the story behind Geno, but I think for him to replicate what he did last year, what was it, 33 touchdowns, like eight interceptions, for him to do that Mm -hmm. again would surprise me. And I think that the Rams are going to be better this year than people think, especially if they all stay healthy. I mean, obviously, there are questions behind Matt Stafford. There are questions behind Cooper Cup. There was this weird podcast. You know, Matt Stafford's wife does this podcast, and she completely outed the poor guy, his, her no own way. husband, by saying that Matt struggles to connect with the younger people in the locker room because he says like, oh, they always used to be like playing cards in the locker room, like mm-hmm. playing poker, shit like that. And now they're just on his phone or on their phones. And Matt just has no idea what to do when they're on their phones. So he just like freezes up. Like she may have sound like Stafford has no idea how to confront people when they're just on their phones, which is just how all the, you know, 20, 25 year olds are at this point, I guess in the locker room, you know what I mean? So no. I don't know. Yeah. She painted like a weird picture of him. And so maybe that's insight into him not feeling super comfortable and confident with some of his players, but mm-hmm. I know he's got that chemistry with Cooper cup. And so there shouldn't be an issue there, but obviously, you know, Cooper cup's going to be double teamed beyond belief. And yeah, you know what? I'm going to take, I'm going to take the Rams here. Actually, I'm going to feel a little bit ballsy, but again, the easy pick, the safe pick is Seattle which I could definitely still see coming through. That's really interesting about about Stafford's wife in that podcast. I didn't know anything yeah, know. about that. You know, she's really sweet, though, like supportive. You know, it's really cool that she gets so into it and, like, yeah. you know, cares about Stafford's going on. Dude, that's quite the, the analysis that she devised, that he can't I connect know. with these, these younger yeah. people. Yeah, it really is, and I feel bad. I, Probably not what he really wanted for her right. to say on the pod, but yeah. you know what? You know, all sorts of weird stuff can happen on the pod, <laughs> as you guys will come to find out. Yeah. And so, yeah, who are you picking? I'm gonna take Seattle here. I have more faith in Gino than than you do, evidently. Um, yeah, evidently so. <laughs> DK is one of my favorite players of all time. I I mm. love DK. I've had him on my fantasy team every year throughout college yeah i just love dk and I'm more of a locket guy myself you know, more of a locket guy he i will say that locket outperforms his adp every single year yeah no, year. he's crazy and the thing is like as soon as he catches the ball and like he sees like a defender like he just goes straight down like the, yep. the boy is smart like he does not want to get hurt at all like yeah the amount of like Ooh, like just kind of like <laughs> self tackles like yeah. as soon as he gets within like proximity of a defender mm-hmm He's down yeah. to protect his body. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe he's not putting his body out on the line for his team. Mm-hmm. You take it as it will. But he's productive. Yeah, it's an interesting uh, choice that he makes yeah. there. Um, but yeah, I, I'm taking Seattle for this game. I love Geno, and I like yeah. DK too. You know what? That's smart. They have this three-headed dragon at receiver. We can't forget about Ohio State, Jackson Smith, the Jigma, JSN, mm. rookie <laughs> receiver, who could be pretty solid. I mean, he could probably be a wide receiver one at some point yeah. in his career. I mean, all these guys really could be wide receiver ones, and yet they're all on the same team right, right. now. One of these guys is bound to get traded or leave next year. Mm-hmm. I think DK or Tyler will because Jackson's been the Jigma should be able to fill their role. The Jigba. I like that. It's a, <laughs> it's a big name. It's a mouthful. Yeah, I do like that. And we think we have the best game of the week, perhaps, this right here. This is a here. good one. Yeah, I mean, this is, oh my God, these two guys are going to be going at it hardcore. I mean, you have Miami at the Chargers. You have Tua 
at Justin Herbert. Tua wants to prove that he was the correct pick over Justin Herbert. And Justin Herbert wants to prove that he should have been picked before Tua and not fallen to six. So both of them have a lot to prove in this game. Although I think, I mean, obviously more so for Tua, despite you know his injuries last year, concussions, all that stuff. I hope he's good in the mind right now and should be a pretty high scoring game. I'm surprised this isn't the higher like it's the second oh, it's, oh, it's the, the second, second. Yeah. yeah they I have the second say, I didn't over even look at any of the over totals but yeah. i would be surprised if this wasn't like right up there with mm-hmm. detroit and kansas city i am going to take los angeles here because it's at home if it was in miami i would take miami mm-hmm. but i again i could totally see miami winning i don't think brandon staley's a good head coach he could squander this victory easy peasy just like he squandered the playoff victory i mean if you blow a 28 nothing lead in the playoffs you could easily lose a game like this Miami visiting you which is a completely competent offense a good mm-hmm. defense and they have a lot to prove over there yeah um pretty much have the exact same reasoning as you yeah. this one's kind of a toss up for me uh I'm taking Chargers cuz it's at home but if it were mm-hmm. in Miami I would be taking them yeah I think it's a toss up so it just comes down to that home field advantage yeah And then here we have our hometown game, Green Bay at Chicago. If Chicago can't win this game, screw the (laughs) Bears, man. I mean, it's about time that the Bears take one here from Green Bay. They're so due. Aaron does not own them anymore. (laughs) No, he does not own them, although he might have passed on the property rights to Jordan Love, who I do think will actually be pretty good this year. I like Jordan Love. But you know what? The trend will be broken. You can't have... Aaron Rodgers sit behind Brett Favre for a few years, become a Hall of Fame quarterback as well, Mm -hmm. and then you can't have Jordan Love do the same thing and also be just as great. So I don't think he'll be just as great as Aaron Rodgers or Brett Favre. I mean, the chances of that happening is literally absurd. I think this organization's a little bit of a mess overall, but you still have Aaron Jones. I do think Jordan Love will be serviceable. I think he'll be kind of like Dak Prescott a lot. He'll throw picks, but he'll win games still Mm -hmm. i don't think he'll win in chicago though i really hope and really think with all the moves the bears made they should be able to pull this game out maybe they lose later on the green bay when it's colder although i haven't looked at the schedule i don't know when they play in green bay but i'm sure it's going to be when it's a little bit colder but right now chicago wins this game otherwise i disown them and i'm just (laughs) i'm not gonna watch any more bears games yeah i i can agree with that for the last like Five years, I feel like every single time the Bears have played uh, have played Green Bay, I take Green Bay, and I'm finally ready to change my pick here to the Bears. I am excited to watch this game. Yeah, I think that Justin has got a lot to prove this year. Mm-hmm. I mean, Bears finished th- three and thirteen last year at three and fourteen, something like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's shocking to me that they finished three and. Three and fourteen. Well, you know, um, they only lost. They lost a whole bunch of games by like one possession. Right. So they were right there in a lot of those games. Like Justin Fields was putting up big boy numbers, mm-hmm. and I think he'll put big boy numbers up in this game as well. Yeah. But you know, it's funny. I wonder. You know, I don't think it's supposed to rain this year, but it would be funny if it was just like that crazy game at the beginning of last season when Trey Lance got hurt in that monsoon game when yeah. San Fran visited Chicago. Mm-hmm. I remember that vividly. Although I think it'll be good weather. I think yeah. it'll be good weather. I think it'll be fine. Yeah. But uh yeah, so with the Bears being like three and fourteen last year, they got the first pick in the draft and mm-hmm. obviously they traded it away to Carolina. Good. Um but they're now like I think twentieth, like ranked twentieth to win the Super Bowl. Like so from coming like from like Dead last, they were ranked thirty yeah, second at yeah. the end of last year, and they're like the twentieth favorite. I know that's not very good, Who but like is that by is that like DraftKings? Yeah, just like yeah, DraftKings wow. FanDuel odds. Like they're ranked like twentieth. Like Houston, I think is dead last, or Arizona, like yeah, right, something like that. I'm so honestly for, surprised about that. I feel yeah. like they'd be around like twenty three, twenty five. Yeah, that's maybe a little high for them, but. Mm-hmm. If you know the cards fall their way, I could see them winning the division. Actually, right. their schedule is pretty easy if you look at it. I could see them winning ten games this year, but I could also see them only winning like six. They could they could sneakily like win this division. I do they like could. that pick a lot. Actually, the odds on that are plus four thirty right now. They are the least like they're the the underdogs to win their division. Really, is yeah. Green Bay over? Them? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's probably just you know historically Green Bay right. has just been so successful against the Bears and yeah. just overall, but. 
I would bet yeah. though. I would bet that Chicago has a better record than Green Bay this year. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Mm-hmm. It really just depends on how Jordan Love comes out of the gate. Yeah, and how he definitely. plays. But yeah, I'm taking the Bears this week, and uh, you know, I know I know you are too. This is yeah. gonna be a fun one to watch. Yeah, I think it's Sunday Night Football as well. Or no, no, no it is that's... unfortunately not. They put a yeah. stupid ass game. Stupid ass Dallas at the Giants. I swear this game. Dallas is always in prime time. And I yeah, just don't they are. care. I think this game was played on Thanksgiving. Yeah, Dallas at the Giants was played mm-hmm. on Thanksgiving. It and was. I just don't give a rat's ass. But I am taking the Giants to win this game. I do not like the Cowboys this year. I think, although Dak made this proclamation that he's going to throw, he's going to turn the ball over less this year, which is just a recipe. For disaster, you make a proclamation like that, you're going to turn the ball over more. You're going to have people coming after you, trying to make you turn the ball over more. Now, I mean, you put a target on your back by saying something like that. So, I think Dallas wins against the Giants when they play them at home. But the Giants are going to win this game here, just because they're riled up after getting embarrassed in Philadelphia last year. They're riled up. I think they lost both games to Dallas last year. Although, wait, 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 wait. I'm thinking about, oh, yeah, no, so Dallas lost to the Commanders at the end of last season, but I do think they swept the Giants. So this is their opportunity to turn the ship around, and I think Daniel Jones will be good. Darren Waller is a great addition. Saquon got paid. So I think the Giants have a good year, similar to last year. Not Mm -hmm. great, nothing amazing, but similar to last year. I'm surprised that you're putting some (laughs) faith in the Giants here, man. I just, I don't like the Cowboys. I think the Cowboys are going to be a little squandery this year. I think they're going to be a little, a little overrated. frazzled. Yeah, I mean, Dak is just an average QB. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's anything special. I think that bringing Trey Lance in is going to make him a little uneasy. Mm-hmm. Although he really awesome. should have nothing to worry about because mm-hmm. he's you know paid great. Trey Lance has nothing under his belt right now. But I right. think it will make him a little uneasy. Maybe for the better, though. But I just, oh my God, I don't think the Cowboys are going to be as good as they were last year. Yeah. Um, They might not be as good, but they still have some nice weapons on offense. Oh yeah, CD. CD is great. Got him on my fantasy team. Um, Tony Pollard now has control of that backfield. Zeke is gone. Yeah, I think that's a good thing. Yes. But Dalton Schultz losing him, that's a no-go for me. That could hurt. I don't like that. That definitely could hurt. Um. I think that Zeke was just really holding Pollard back. Yeah, no, I swear, like, every time they gave Zeke the ball, it's like watching him run in quicksand. Yeah. <laughs> he was a turtle. Yeah, Pollard's just the younger, better back. Yeah. He's going to have a good season. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think I was uh, had him targeted at, like, running back four or so in, in some of my leagues. I think he's going to have a very good season. I think that he was going at, like, the, the one-two turn for me. In, yeah, in that's my fair. I think that's fair. Yeah. So are you picking Dallas to win this I'm game? I'm picking Dallas to win this game, yeah. Right. They are America's team after all. Yeah. But I do love I do love the say Quizzler. <laughs> yeah, no, say Quizzler. He's healthy again. He is healthy and he's still I think what, like twenty eight, twenty nine years old. No, he's no way he's twenty nine years old. He's like twenty seven no, he old yet. Might even be twenty six. He's a yeah. young buck. Yeah, I think so, yeah. So and he's paid, he's a happy man. Mm-hmm. So I think they'll actually be okay. Next up, we have Buffalo at the Jets here. So, wow, we have like three New York teams kind of in a row right here. Mm -hmm. You know what? Buffalo is an easy pick for me here. I think they are favored only by one and a half at the moment, which is way too little in my opinion. This is going to be the Jets' first game with Aaron Rodgers, first game Alan Lazar, lots of new pieces at New York. I think New York will be all right this year. I'm very excited to see Aaron Rodgers in a Jets uniform. I think this is a great game to play on Monday night. But asking, they're asking a lot from the Jets in their first game. I mean, yes, yeah, 65% of the money is on Buffalo. Maybe that's a little bit too much. But mm-hmm. for them to only be favored by one and a half points, Buffalo is going to be one of the best teams in the league as they have been over the last few years. I think Josh Allen's going to play well. You know, they have. Some nice pieces on the you know receiver end of it, Dalton Kincaid, new tight end. And then the other thing I wanted to say is think back to Tom Brady's first game with the Buccaneers. The year they won the Super Bowl, they basically got blown out 
against New Orleans. First game, division mm-hmm. rivalry, a very similar game to this right here, mm-hmm. got blown out. And I bet New Orleans covered that spread substantially. And I think the same exact thing is going to happen here with Buffalo. I mean, the fact that they are only favored by one and a half really blows my mind. Mm-hmm. I think this is this is like a 30-20 game to me, 30, even 17 type of game. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I like Buffalo a lot in this one. I am definitely taking them this week. Um, I think it'll be a little closer, though. I mean, the Jets and Buffalo have a nice little division rivalry. Yeah. The Jets, they beat them at least once last year, if not both times. Is that right? I think they beat them once. Okay. Um, but, yeah, that the, was... This when, other like, game was very close. Yeah, the you know, they did play year. them well last year. It was when Buffalo got a little squirrely. Mm-hmm. You know, like, Buffalo always gets a little squirrely because, like, two years ago they lost 9 to nothing to the horrible Jaguars, like, yeah. before. I think Trevor Lawrence was there. That was his rookie season. But, mm-hmm. you know, they always have, like, those squirrely games like this. And I think they lost to the Steelers, like, in week one or two last year. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, man. I just think that the Jets are going to struggle to figure it out early on in the season. I think they'll right. get hot later on, though. But right now, nah. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm with you with the Buffalo pick. It is still at home, um, you know, for the Jets, yeah. though. So I think that that could be a slight Maybe. advantage for them. Um, I'm excited to watch Aaron play, though. Oh, yeah. People are saying Garrett Wilson are going to have, he is going to have an incredible season this year. Yeah, I um, agree with that for sure. I think him and then George Pickens are going to be two, like, great second year yes. receivers. Mm-hmm. But having Alan Lazard right now is kind of like, Aaron Rodgers' comfort blanket because right. he already has the chemistry. So I think Aaron or Alan Lazard is going to get a lot of targets early on until you know him and that's a good pick. Garrett I like Wilson, that. yeah, until yeah. Garrett Wilson and him like develop that chemistry. Like Aaron mm-hmm. Rodgers struggles to trust new guys. You yeah. know, you think back to Green Bay, like when they brought Randall Cobb back in. I mean, it was like, yes, Daddy Cobb. Please come back. I don't trust Christian Watson yet. And then Christian yeah. Watson exploded. But it wasn't until like week 11 right. until you know Christian Watson started making any noise. So mm-hmm. those are my thoughts. Yeah. No, those are good thoughts. Um, yeah, I do think Garrett Wilson will have a season almost similar to Devontae uh, Adams a couple mm. of years ago. Scrove Monte. Yeah. Um, I do think it will take some time for Aaron to learn their offense, though, oh, yeah. and figure it out. He hasn't been in, in New York long enough to be able to prosper at – such an early point in the season. So for those reasons, I am also taking Buffalo this week. Good stuff. Good stuff. So that concludes all the games, all 16. Obviously, no buys, I think, until like week six at the point in this year. And so we're going to jump to a couple of fantasy football type add-ons here. A couple of thoughts on fantasy football. Obviously, we'll get a little bit more in-depth with this as the year goes on. We're going to look at some of those like borderline matchups, those borderline starring sits where it's like, oh, it's not Justin Jefferson where it's like obviously you start him no matter what. Right. And it's not, you know, oh my God, who's like someone I can think of? Rashi Rice. Yeah, yeah. Some like <laughs> third string receiver that you never start unless it's like a 20 team league. You know what I mean? It's like those in betweeners right now. So I know you have a couple in mind. You can mm-hmm. go ahead. Let's hear them. Yeah. So I'm starting Michael Thomas this week. Uh, when he is healthy, mm-hmm. he is incredible. He yeah, is, I love that. Yeah, he is a great player when he's healthy. Now, that being said, I don't think <laughs> he'll stay healthy for very long. He seems incredibly injury prone. Um, but at least when he's in there, he is a, a magnet for that ball. Yeah, I know. I mean, he did great with Drew Brees. I think, honestly, he's had like two or three years of being banged up. Yeah. The law of averages dictates that he's actually going to be <laughs> healthy for almost the entire season this year. Yeah, that so sounds I like some I, Notre Dame knowledge coming through right yeah, there. Yeah, you know what? I pull the law of averages out all the time. I overuse <laughs> it. But you know what? It works, though. I mean, it is yeah. the law. It's a law. Mm-hmm. So I love this one, actually. I love starring Michael Thomas. I think the Saints are going to throw the ball a ton this year. Chris Olave is going to be double teamed a lot. I think Chris Olave will do great, but Michael Thomas will have a lot of opportunities. Yes, definitely. And then my sit for the week, uh, this one maybe is a little surprising. I don't really know. I'm sitting Jameer Gibbs this week. Um, I know that you know, he's got a lot of hype around him too. Probably the second best rookie running back in the, you know, this year's fantasy drafts right. and things like yep. that right behind um, Bijan right yeah um, I think that the Lions are going to slowly acclimate him into their offense yeah I think that David Montgomery Monty is going to get 
most of the touches in this game and Jameer will get in there for for a few here and there mm-hmm. I'd be surprised if he even got into double digit carries for this game I don't think he's going to be in there very much so I'm sitting Jameer this week but as the season goes on I am definitely expecting him to have a good year I'm not sure I love this sit to be mm-hmm. honest with you because I think that the Lions are going to stay within the the Chiefs, like they're going to stay close with the Chiefs that entire game, so right. they'll never have to abandon the run. Mm-hmm. So I think they will still use Jameer quite a bit. Then they're going to want to see what he has. But I totally understand seeing him just to see, you know, how the usage with David Montgomery looks like. Yeah, that's before fair. you know, devoting a whole spot on your roster to him. But I just think, especially you know, with you picking the Lions to win, mm-hmm. they're not going to need to throw the ball, you know, a dick ton. Like they may have had to if Travis Kelsey is going to play or whatnot, or if you know the discrepancy between the two teams was more. So, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's all right, it's all right. Okay, well, let's hear <laughs> what your your starts and sits are. Yeah, week. mine are a little bit wild. I kind of pulled on my ass here, but I like definitely starring Christian Kirk. It's kind of like what I said. So with some of the other players, you gotta let the relationships develop with these quarterback and wide receiver combos. Trevor Lawrence and Calvin Ridley have not played a single down together yet in a pro game, a real pro game. Whereas he played a lot last year with Christian Kirk and made Christian Kirk very, very productive. Not like amazing, not like anything godlike, but I think he'll be solid in this game. Although they'll probably get way ahead in this game and start running the ball a ton and they won't need to throw a ball. So there's that as well. Then you have Cortland Sutton, another receiver. Again, I think that with Jerry Judy being questionable, him struggling over the last couple of years, I think Russell Wilson likes Cortland a little bit better. I think they've had a little bit more chemistry over the last year. So I would definitely start Cortland, especially in a game against Vegas. I think it'll be a little bit closer despite them pulling away at the end. Here's my boldest one of the week. If you have an 8, 10, or 12 person league, I would sit Ramondre Stevenson because they're going up against a tough Philly defense. They're going to be behind. They're going to be throwing the ball a ton. Ramondre is not going to get a ton of opportunities because Mac Jones is going to have to sling the ball around in order to keep up with Philly here. But if you're in like a 14, 16, etc. league, you have to start Ramondre. He is a RB1 on a solid team. But if you're in that 8 or 10, you could definitely sit him and be okay. So hold on a second there. That, that is a very bold pick. I know it's bold, but I could see him. I could see him being like under fifty yards on the day. You know, under fifty yards, under thirty yards receiving. It could be a real squandering. Yeah. But his, I mean, he was never really a like a running back. He was more of a receiving back. You know. Yeah, but I don't know. I just I think they're gonna have to push the ball down the field here. Yeah, I and it's bold. You know, point. I know it's bold. Like obviously, like I said, like even maybe in a twelve person league, you gotta start Ramondre. You, you gotta start him. I feel like if he's on your team, like you don't think that Zeke is going to like take any of his action. No, 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 no. Zeke okay. is gonna be pretty irrelevant. I think this year. I think Zeke's maybe like for those goal line you right. know, punch-ins. Yeah, but I think they're going to be down. They're gonna have to throw the ball. It's gonna be probably a little hotter. I just think that. If you have maybe, and it's very possible someone has like Etienne and Chubb or someone has like Kenneth Walker and Chubb, you don't need to start mm-hmm. Ramondro. Ramondro, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I I take a little bit of issue with that, but, but yeah. we'll see what happens with, with this pick. That'd be pretty saucy if you correctly predict this, Dude, this it, set. It would be. It would be pretty saucy for sure. I'm sorry, I have some notifications popping up, guys. I thought I silenced all my devices, but I mean, when you have like 17 of them out here, <laughs> who knows what could happen? You're just a popular guy. Yeah, it's for my job. I'm only popular because of my job, sadly. Anywho, my next one and my final one is starting Cole Komet. Not only is he Notre Dame grad, he's on the Bears, and he had a lot of breakout games last year. He is. The most familiar, I think, with Justin Fields, along with Darnell Mooney. I mean, you have DJ Moore. That's a new relationship. Chase Claypool didn't play a whole lot last year. I think Cole Kamab will definitely get some good looks in this game. I think he'll have a touchdown at least. And so definitely start him if you have him in your fantasy leagues. I think he is going to have a better week than maybe even like Mark Andrews. I think he is going to probably have a better week than Pat Fryermuth. I think he's going to be right up there with... I think Darren Waller could have a good week this week in terms of tight ends. But yeah, I mean, definitely start him over like Dalton Kincaid. Start him over 
almost all tight ends, unless you have like George Kittle or Travis Kelsey, Darren Waller. I can get behind that pick. Yeah, I like yeah. your starts this week. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of those starts. Yeah, no, I think if you start those, you know, you could be in good shape. Although Christian Kirk, starting to feel a little bit sour on that one just because i think the jaguars are gonna get way ahead in that game and then they're gonna yeah. be like all right we're just gonna pound you know tanks tank. Bigsby. yeah i think at that point i think tanks could have a big game Give it to tank <laughs> yeah all right so let's move on now to our best bets and parlays of the week we're gonna give you guys the cheat codes the secret weapon to win some money off of whether it be DraftKings, you know fan duel prize picks and hopefully eventually we can get a sponsorship from one of those guys that would, you know, that, would be, that would be awesome positively that would be voltaic oh my god you know it would be <laughs> just oh my god be <laughs> majestic yeah I so like that. Right, well, i will i will uh take it from here i'm very yeah. excited for this segment um I don't know if you're going to agree with my first pick, but once you hear the the thought process behind it, you might like it a little bit more. So we had a little bit of a disagreement on the, the money line in the Detroit KC game. Um, right. I would take Detroit money line here. And DraftKings is running this nice promo right now. It's an up seven promo. Oh my gosh, yes. So if you bet Detroit money line, which the odds on that, well, when I placed the bet earlier, they were plus 245. Yeah. Um, and they moved down since we have news of the Kelsey injury. Right. They may change whether or not Kelsey is out, um, but they're down to like plus 205 now. But anyway, so this DraftKings up seven promo. If you bet Lions money line, they score on the first drive. Your money line bet automatically cashes. Yeah, I think that is very liable to happen. I could yeah. totally see Kansas City deferring going up, mm-hmm. then letting Detroit going up seven, and then bam. I mean, you just automatically win. Yeah. Can't I, complain about that. I love that, and especially the value you're getting at. I mean, I got it at plus 245, but even if you're going to place this bet at plus 200, uh, DraftKings is allowing a wager of $50 on it, so that would still pay out. You know, you would win 100 bucks off that. Yeah. Um, I think that's great value. So I'm I'm excited about that, and I definitely think you should capitalize on this up seven promo DraftKings is running this week. Yeah, I even though I picked Kansas City, really can't yeah. argue with that. I mm-hmm. think that's a no brainer for sure. Yeah, I think the odds are definitely in your favor on that one. Right, and even if Detroit doesn't even go up seven, if they just still win the game, then your bet yeah, still cashes. Yeah, they win so, last second field goal, easy peasy. Yeah, so it's like you're, you've you got multiple chances to win at plus 200 odds. Is I love the value there. So we're taking Detroit money line this week, and I'm really excited about that pick. Um, and then I'm also, I tossed some coin on a nice little underdog <laughs> parlay here. Um Again, we had some slight disagreement on the the Cincinnati Cleveland game, but I'm betting Browns and Titans. You parlay those for yeah. plus four hundred and twenty five odds. That's a smart bet. That's odds a smart parlay. Bet. Um, I like that. And then if you're really feeling like extra saucy, or you know, you're just a degenerate like myself, <laughs> and you want to tack oh. Miami on there, <laughs> um, so the the three leg underdog parlay: Browns, <laughs> Titans, and Miami money lines would be plus eleven hundred fifty three odds. I think those are some solid odds on on games that I think will certainly be close. If they don't if they don't cash, I think these are going to be close games either way. And so I like the value you're getting on these three. Yeah, it's a really good value for sure because, again, Joe Burrow could not start. Joe Burrow is probably not going to be 100% mm-hmm. anyways. It's in Cleveland. I already picked Tennessee to win that game. So really good value here. And, yeah, if you're feeling frisky, yeah. tack on Miami. If I'm, you're feeling really frisky, tack on the Rams. Wow, that would that'd be pretty extreme. I'm mm-hmm. always feeling quite frisky, though. I mean, you got to take some chances. Yeah, definitely. I've already submitted the bet. I did not include the Rams, so I guess I was only feeling moderately frisky this week. No. But maybe next week I'll be feeling (laughs) an elevated level of friskiness. Yeah, I might have to toss some coin on that one myself. I have to get into some betting. I have to sign up for some of these platforms to take advantage of these deals. Yeah. Make some money here. Let's hear what picks you got. Yeah, you know, I'm not as, like, squirrely as you. I'm just a little bit more vanilla. You know, I'm not as kinky. I just go straight up on some of these. Yeah. But I need to start experimenting more with parlays. But anyways... I already touched on this one a little bit. I love Houston, whether it's 9.5, whether it's 10. Underdogs, 
at Baltimore, that's a little bit crazy to me. That's a little bit much. Again, I don't think Baltimore is going to be all that this year. So really a big fan of that. But be responsible with your betting. It is a rookie quarterback starting his first game, after all. <laughs> so is, I will put that Houston, out there. It is Houston, man. Yeah, it, is it is Houston. It is the Texans. But I like their head coach a lot. Was yeah. it like Nico Ryan or something like that? Something, I think, yeah. yeah, I think he's going to be all right. Plus 10 is a big gap for, yeah, for NFL. Just, and Houston made all of their games, not all of them, but made many games yeah. where they were massive underdogs mm-hmm. last year, like a one-score game. They beat Jacksonville once. Yeah. And they gave the Bears the number one pick yeah. by beating the Colts. Mm-hmm. And I think they also they almost beat Dallas as well. Yeah, they had like they had so many games that, oh, yeah, yeah. that they were just like a field goal away from winning, right. and yet they didn't have a record to show that. No, but that's a good pick. Yeah, so I definitely like that. It's just good value, even mm-hmm. if it doesn't necessarily come through. I think more often than not, though, it would. And then same kind of thing here with Tennessee. They are plus one forty underdogs. Just the money line here again. Lots of new components. At New Orleans, Derek Carr not only has to learn to play with Chris Olave, he's got to learn to play with Michael Thomas. He's got a new system, new head coach. It's a defensive mm-hmm. head coach, Dennis Allen, who I don't like. Tennessee, so underrated this year. You still have Derek Henry. You still have Ryan Tannehill, a super confident quarterback. Honestly, I think every time he's gone against Derek Carr over the last few years, he's won. Let's think about that. He has gone up against Derek Carr in Vegas multiple times over the last two, three years, and I believe he's won every bit of them every single one and there was this one crazy play he made he threw an interception against the Raiders a few years ago and he went and tackled the guy himself saving the pick six wow so Tannehill he's solid all right Mm -hmm. stop dogging on him okay and then also like I said the Rams at Seattle they are five and a half point underdogs as it stands right now and that is minus 110 so I wouldn't necessarily bet I mean like I said I did pick Seattle to win the game but I think there's more value in the spread here, betting the Rams to keep it within five and a half points. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, no, that's good. I know value. you picked Seattle, but I mean, do you think maybe yeah, the Rams I, will keep it within five and a half? I think you picked the Rams too, though. No, yes, you I did pick the, the Rams, Rams. Yeah. But like, you picked Seattle. I did pick Seattle. Do you think the Rams will keep it within five and a half? I, yeah, I could get behind this bet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like that, that plus five and a half. This, this is going to be a close one. And then just straight up the Giants money line plus 140, like I already talked about. I think being played in New York, they have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder after last year. Dallas is a little bit questionable in my opinion. I really do think the loss of Dalton Schultz is going to affect them. Do they still have Blake Jarwin though? He was always pretty solid, but he really struggled with Mm -hmm. injuries. I have no idea where that dude's at these days, but either way, Actually, I think it's that Jake Ferguson now. I mean, yeah, it might be. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's some crazy like mm-hmm. no name tight end right there. So yeah, those are my picks for this week, and yeah, that is all we currently have for you guys for this podcast episode one, week one. We're gonna try and keep it around an hour, like plus or minus ten minutes. And so obviously this one went a little bit longer because of our introductions and all that stuff. But I think that's okay. I always like longer podcasts because. There are more times, you know, there's always going to be times where I'm just commuting to work or doing something that I can't necessarily watch, but I can listen. So that's why I love podcasts for, and the longer the better, the more meteor, just the more time you can eat up. Yeah. The more uh, time to occupy yourself. Yeah. Thank yeah. you guys for listening. I'm excited oh, yeah. to track our, our records next next week, and we'll, yeah. see, we'll see how we do if we're mm-hmm. true sorcerers or not. Oh, we will be true yeah. sorcerers for sure. We're going to be good. And... It is week one after all. Let's just put a preface out there. It's week one. Anything could happen on a given Sunday, you Mm -hmm. know, especially week one Sundays. So, but yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Maybe it's only three of you guys. It could only be like one person out there. It could literally just be my dad and maybe your dad as well. But (laughs) as time grows and as we build our credibility, people will join. So yeah, thanks for sticking around to the end of the episode. Let us know in the comments below, what do you think? of our picks feel free to write in i'm gonna provide like an email address so you can write your own questions and comments in and we could touch on them eventually on the show as well really good time really fun and we'll be back next wednesday to reassess all this